The stern suspension of the 9-11, beautifully made of a holocaust aluminium part and zinc-plated yellow chromated struts named Schwerter, words in German. Parts of it peek out of the wheelhouses when the car is standing on the road. Visible technology that reminds me of a motorbike. Could I live with these parts looking weary and badly maintained? I guess you already know what's going on here. This is a man rounding off a nut. The G50 gear is significantly wider than the 915 and the space left for the spanner is, ah, uh, you know, it's all lame excuse. With that problem solved, I fixed the trailing arm with zip ties in order to keep it from falling when all screws would be removed and I was confident I'd be able to smoothly get the part out by clipping the ties while the other hand would be ready to take it. What really happened is, without looking, my hand grabbed the damper instead of the trailing arm and... Uh, <laughs> When I started inspecting the extent of the disaster, I found that this steel bolt had absorbed the biggest part of the impact force and luckily this very expensive and very hard to get part survived the crash without further damage. This work can also be done properly and here is the proof. This wheel carrier came out suspiciously easily and we shall see in a second why. Obviously a damaged bearing had slipped on the shaft and already sliced off two tenths of a millimeter. Can't go in again. Mm. 
the carrier plate of the handbrake shouldn't attach here at all. And if it does, contact corrosion is the reason. It confirmed me a lot that it was about time to do this work. Talking about contact corrosion, it became the predominant problem to solve during the coming days. I've stopped counting the hours that it took me to remove the steel bolts from the aluminium trailing arm, on and on heating parts up and cooling them again. It culminated in the removal of the bushings that connect the suspension to the body. They are designed as an inner and outer connection ring with rubber between and the inner rings were right in the middle of a massive corrosion process that had merged the parts into one. Disassembling these parts is not a fun thing to do if the car in his life has experienced salted roads. 
But letting it go is not an option either, for contact corrosion eventually can silently kill it. Part supply is running low already these days, and 9-11s are rather safe than scrapped, so I guess it won't get any better. In my case, the aluminium trailing arms had started corroding in a way that a couple of more years might have eaten up the contact patches. But this is not going to happen now. A friend of mine has gone through pretty much the same restoration project with a head start of a week or two and sharing his experiences with me was invaluable. Marcus also invited me to come around to do all the press fitting work at his beautiful little workshop. Finally, the trailing arms received a thin coat of two-component clear of the kind you'll find it on motorbike engines. It puts an additional layer of protection between aluminium and steel, and what is more, it gives me the feeling I did all I could. Pressing out the wheel carrier, one of the two inner rings of the wheel bearing will stay on the shaft, and a draw knife is what you need. The entire set of steel parts went to the plater. You know, the look of these parts depends a lot from the way they are treated before the actual plating takes place, so instead of giving them to the plater next door, I wanted them to go through the hands of a company that has experience with 9-11s. Not a good idea. The delivery company lost the parcel. I really mean it. They lost it. No trace of it for almost two weeks. No update in the app, no news, nothing. A so-called investigation order at some point resurfaced the parcel. Investigation order obviously means that someone is forced to do the job his colleagues have refused to do in the first place. Now, if you think that finding the parcel means that they would now also deliver it, uh, no. They put it aside again for a couple of days till the blader went to the distribution center and forced them to give it back to him. This is Germany, by the way. In order to press the wheel carriers into the bearings, the handbrake must be installed first. So what you get here is a sneak preview to the next film, which will deal with the restoration of the brake system. The parts are magnificent. 
Bringing the suspension together again reveals all the beauty that Porsche put into this design back in the 60s. This borderline maniac addiction to detail and will to succeed without caring a straw about what all the others do. You just gotta love them for that. This eccentric bolt shifts the body side part of the suspension towards the suspension sword and therefore adjusts the height of the car over ground. I mean, look at it. I scratched a mark into it before I separated the parts in order to find a semi-decent starting position for the overall suspension settings. Given the already epic proportions of this film project, the fine tuning needs to be postponed to a separate film. Bringing the left and the right words together equally is the first step to have the car standing on the road in a well-balanced way later on. Eventually I reached a precision of 0.2 degrees without great efforts and that is acceptable for the moment. The sprockets of the torsion springs have 48 teeth, which means shifting them by one tooth allows you to turn the sword by 7.5 degrees. As the teeth of the inner and the outer sprocket have an offset, flipping the spring gives another factor of 2, i.e. about 4 degrees. Marcus told me that 32 degrees towards the ground are about right. That is the way I put the car together now, and some fine tuning can be done later on by means of the eccentric bolt we've seen before. The tightening torques are sometimes seen as suggestions, but you know they aren't. The guys from Matupa have promised me to make you the best price on the web for this excellent Ghidorah Red torque wrench. So drop them a mail if you want one and mention Greasy Fingers. 
The address can be found in the video description. As always, if you like my videos, please comment, subscribe and send me a like and recommend the channel to your little sister. Who's up?